Well, as we talked about here over the last few days on the 208, a major national discussion after the passing of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, it continues to be about the now vacant seat on the United States Supreme Court. President Trump says he's going to announce his nominee on Saturday, and it appears the Republican controlled United States Senate could sign off on it soon. A goal for many Republicans is to do that before Election Day. A discussion stemming from that conversation is, would the Supreme Court now have the votes to overturn, say, Roe v. Wade? That's the landmark case that affirmed a woman's right to make her own medical decisions, including the choice to have an abortion as protected under the 14th Amendment. Many have asked what would happen with abortion rights across the country if a new justice could tip the scales toward overturning Roe v. Wade. Well, here in Idaho, that process is already outlined through legislation passed just this last year. Joe Paris explains the situation. Idaho Senate Bill 1385, which was signed into law this past March, lays out a roadmap for if the United States Supreme Court ever overturns Roe v. Wade. And that's a Supreme Court case that provides abortion protections under the 14th Amendment. The bill is what we call a trigger bill. One of the bill sponsors, Representative Megan Blanksma, explains how it would work. So it doesn't go into effect until either the Supreme Court or a constitutional amendment restores state authority to prohibit abortions. Eight other states have laws similar to Idaho, each though can vary. Blanksma explains what Idaho's covers. It outlaws abortion in most cases. So, but it does provide for an affirmative defense in the case of rape and incest for women, and it doesn't criminalize abortion for pregnant women. To be clear, under the law in Idaho, criminal punishment would only apply to the person performing the abortion, not the woman. A doctor performing an abortion would face two to five years in prison, and their medical license would be subject to suspension. Again, the trigger law does provide an exception for cases of rape and incest. Blanksma explains the conversation that lawmakers had about those exceptions. Part of the discussion on the floor was talking about choices, and particularly in the case of rape and incest, that choice is taken away from the woman. They, they don't have a choice. They're, they're forced into a situation that, that they didn't choose to be in. And so that was why it was particularly important to put those exemptions in. According to data from the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare, between 2008 and 2018, there was an average of about 1,500 abortions performed each year in Idaho. A majority of those abortions were for women aged 20 to 29. Planned Parenthood of the Great Northwest and the Hawaiian Islands provides care and education for women in Idaho seeking an abortion. They write in a statement, quote, Planned Parenthood is deeply concerned about the attacks on Roe v. Wade and reproductive health in general. We will continue to fight for meaningful access to reproductive health care for all. Lawmakers said during the 2020 legislative session they had a lot of feedback from Idahoans about the push for pro-life protections. Idaho as a state is very overwhelmingly pro-life, so we had an overwhelming amount of support for this legislation. All right, Joe, a whole lot of steps, hurdles that have to be crossed before we even get to this, but you call it, it's called a trigger law, which makes it seem like it happens almost instantly, but does it? Is it an instant uh, application or is there like a waiting period before any of that takes place here in Idaho? Well, under the law, that's actually, it's on the books right now. So it is Idaho law. The only thing it's waiting to happen is for that trigger to happen. It would be 30 days after a Supreme Court decision or a constitutional amendment. So there'd be about a month to get everything into place and to make sure everything's ironed out. It wouldn't be this instantaneous thing where this decision would come out and then the next minute you would have a whole set of new laws here in the state of Idaho. And there's also been questions that I saw back in March and uh, it really as recently as this week about why did this happen in Idaho in 2020? Were they looking forward to something like this? Well, Representative Blanks was said this is something that lawmakers and the people of Idaho have been working on for several years. It just happened in 2020. This past legislative session is when it finally got done. So there wasn't some ulterior motive at the beginning of this year looking ahead to what could happen at the end of 2020. This is just kind of when everything worked out. Yeah, they've been trying to do this for couple of years now in the Idaho legislature. But again, as we mentioned, a lot of things have to happen before we get to there. And we're going to see how this plays out here over the next several months in Washington, D.C. Thank you very much, Joe.